Hello and welcome back, Disney fans. Disney's Frozen was released back in 2013, bringing with it a bunch of fun and quirky characters that the world fell in love with. A not-so-beloved character from the first Frozen film is that of Hans Westergaard, who plays the manipulative antagonist. But did you know that Hans had a pretty sad backstory that explains exactly why he was so evil and manipulative in the first place? In today's video, we're going to be diving into who Hans is and the history of where he came from. Before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of all things Disney and Pixar, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We upload videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and cover topics ranging from general movie discussions to fan theories and Easter eggs. If that interests you, please like and subscribe and be sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our magical uploads. All right, let's not waste any more time and get right on into it. First, let's dig into the details about the movie and what it tells us about Hans. Though they did not make an appearance in the movie, Hans mentions that he has many siblings on numerous occasions throughout the film. Specifically, he mentions that he has 12 older brothers, and for the most part, they did not treat him well. While speaking with Anna, Hans mentions that three out of his 12 brothers like to play pranks on Hans that were quite nasty. He also mentions that three of them pretended like he was invisible for two years, which is kind of awful when you think about it. Even Anna acknowledges this fact. When Hans tells her this story, she says how horrible it was. Hans brushes it off, though, saying, it's what brothers do. Though Anna disagrees, they don't discuss the matter too much more after that. Fast forward toward the end of the movie after Hans attacks Elsa. It's at this point that the audience clearly sees how evil Hans truly was with his own selfish goals in mind. He is imprisoned aboard a ship that is set to see him back to his homeland in the Southern Isle where he awaits a fit punishment for his crimes. A French dignitary mentions that it will be up to Hans' brothers to enforce the unknown punishment. Would it be life in a cell? Execution? As it would turn out, when Disney released Frozen Fever, fans finally got a bit of insight into Hans' punishment. Turns out, one of the things he was now forced to do was be the stable boy and clean out all of the horse manure. It's pretty clear that Hans' brothers had no trouble deciding on a punishment befitting their little brother. And if anything, it shows what they truly think of him. But why did Hans become the person we see in the film? What in his past turned him into an evil sociopath we see in the movie? This question has us turning our attention to A Frozen Heart, a novel written by Elizabeth Rudnick that runs just over 300 pages. It's intended for a more mature audience, but is based on the 2013 animated feature Frozen. In the novel, we learn a little bit more about Hans' backstory, including the fact that by the time he had reached the age of a young adult, all of Hans' brothers had already been married and living rather happily. This is one of the many pieces of the puzzle that will reveal why Hans ended up so sinister. We also learn a bit more about the hierarchy within Hans' family. We find out that Hans' oldest brother, who goes by the name of Caleb, was the family favorite, particularly the father's favorite. In addition, most of his siblings treated him rather poorly, as we heard him mention in the film. They go into a bit more detail in the novel, however, as we find out that Hans grew up in a very toxic environment. Being the youngest made him the most susceptible to harassment and cruel pranks at the hands of his older brothers. In fact, two of his older brothers were twins, named Rudy and Runo, and they were the ones who bullied Hans the most. They would even go as far as to humiliate him during important political proceedings that he was required to attend. As for his father, the king, he was the worst of them all. He had a very strong distaste for any weakness in his family. So instead of sticking up for the young Hans when his older siblings would torment him, he saw it as a form of weakness and allowed the tormenting to continue. If Hans wasn't able to defend himself against his 12 older brothers, then he wasn't going to make it far in his father's eyes. There was simply no room for weakness in the king's household. Now, even though most of his family treated him badly, Hans did have one brother that was fairly kind to him. This brother was named Lars, who happened to be a passionate historian. Not only was Lars the brightest of his siblings, but he was also the kindest to him. Unfortunately, one person's kind voice sounds rather silent when in contrast to almost a dozen crueler ones. Hans really didn't have much of a chance. From the very start, his siblings and father beat him down and tore any sense of innocence that may have existed out their castle window. In order to survive, Hans had to grow cold. He became more calculated, thinking of all his next moves as if it were a game of chess. By the time he was an adult, his siblings already had marriages and castles of their own. It was now time for Hans to do the same, in his own way, of course. It makes sense why Hans chose Arendelle. With the king and queen having already passed and only needing to spice up his charm to convince a naive Anna to marry him, 
there was practically no competition. In the end, we know this doesn't work out the way he plans, and he gets sent back to his homeland to be punished by the family he hates and that also hates him. But just like most live-action Disney remakes of the villain, like Maleficent and their newest, Cruella, the backstory really does explain the events that create the monster we see on screen. It's tragic in a way to see how environment and circumstances really do create a villain. It's easy to paint a character as the bad guy until we get the full story of how they transformed in the first place. What do you think? Do you think Han's backstory makes him worthy of forgiveness for his actions? Be sure to let us know in the comments. That's all, Disney fans. Thank you for watching today's video, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.